This is the perfect autumn mine when you are tired of summer rosé, but you are still not ready for winter barolo. Put your fucking pants on! You gross! Hello my followers to the world of Summerlay, this is your guide, Corebreaker. Tonight's topic is the king, the queen and the princess of the grape kingdom. Most expensive wine ever sold in human history is made from this grape. Yes, you got it right. It is Pinot Noir. The thing is, this grape is very finicky, which is a fancy word for one who is difficult and hard to please. Starting from the climate, it buds early in the growing season, so it is susceptible to the spring frost. But it prefers cooler climate. But in the same time, there must be lots of sun. And by lots of sun, I don't mean heat. Heat is bad, only sun. Okay. But with lots of sun, I do not mean too much sun, because too much sun might shrivel or even burn its thin skins. Talking about the skins, there should not be too much rain. Los Angeles will be experiencing a quarter inch of rain. <gasps> so much. And standing water somewhere near, because this immediately will cause rot and mildew in the vineyard. And because skins are sensitive, hail is strictly not welcome in Pinot Noir parties. Let's say that um, it was perfect year. Well, this does not mean that there will be lots of wine. No, Pinot Noir yields are very low and growers are only rewarded with small grape bunches carrying small berries. Mainly this grape reminds me of this guy. Aaron, yes. coffee. Okay. Not from the kitchen, stop and shop. If it's not stop and shop, I send it back. Okay. Large. If it's a medium, I send it back. If it's an extra large, I send it back. How, how do you return coffee? Go. It partly explains why Pinot Noir wines are usually a bit more expensive. But one of the reasons why wine snobs cannot say no to this wine is that the grape has a superpower to clearly transmit terroir. That's why. If you tell someone who knows three differences between Champagne and Prosecco, that you like Pinot Noir from Europe. They put you in jail. If you say that you like Pinot Noir from France. Right to jail. And even if you say that you like Pinot Noir from Burgundy. Right to jail, right away. You have to be more specific to stay alive between those wine snobs. Where did you study, Ms. Ledgate? The Wine Academy. The Wine Academy? In Bordeaux? Yes. It is the grape which asks you to do your homework before opening a bottle and with every single sip it will teach you something new. For tonight's investigation I chose two wines from France. Bonjour Jean. Oh, look at you. One from grape's birthplace Burgundy is Savigny Les Bonnes 2018 by Louis Max and another is from the place where grows the best Riesling France has to offer. Azaz, Pinot Noir 2018 by Domaine Moret. Let's see what are the differences between these two locations. Savigny Les Bonnes is situated in the southern part of the Côte d'Or, being part of Côte de Bonne region, and Warburg Grand Cru is also situated in the south of Azaz. Savigny covers 365 hectares of vineyards, while Warburg covers 73 hectares. Savigny Les Bonnes vineyards altitudes vary from 250 to 400 meters, while Warburg is slightly lower, going from 210 to 300 meters. Because Savigny Les Bain is uh, much bigger, there are very different terroir, lower slopes consist of alluvial soils, higher will be more based on gravel, limestone and clay, while Warburg is mainly based on limestone and sandstone soils. Main grapes which grow in Savigny Les Bain are Pinot Noir, Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc, and in Warburg are Gewurzamina, Riesling, Pinot Gris and tiny amount of Pinot Noir. Let's check the winemakers. Maison Louis Max was established in 1859 by the son of a Georgian winemaker who emigrated to Nuit Saint George, Evgeny Louis Max. Even though Philoxera was moving to bankruptcy one winemaker after another, Evgeny's son Theodore saw an opportunity and built a maison with offices, tasting rooms and cellar and for the next years they continued growing by acquiring new plots in Côte d'Or and uh, southern France. But in 2007 they changed their direction and production process and 
laid more emphasis on viticulture and organic farming to produce the best grapes. Grapes for this wine are hand harvested and wine is aged in oak barrels, 30% of which are new oak barrels for 12 months. And Domaine Moret is a bit older estate and it dates back to the 1650s when Michel Moret established himself as a winemaker in West Helen, south of Alsace. His descendant Alfred Moret purchased Clos Saint Lendelin in 1935. Now 28 hectare organic winery is managed by 12th generation brother and sister Thomas and Veronique and their father René. This wine I searched all of the internet and I only found that it is matured in oak barrels. So let's assume it is also aged for 12 months. It's tasting time. I'm getting notes of uh, dried robin's blood, old dirty cashews, and just a hint of a robot's bath water. Starting with uh, Savigny Les Bern, it has a medium intensity garnet color on the nose. Medium plus intensity aromas of ripe cherry, ripe raspberries, blueberries, cherry stones, rose petals and old wood. Mouth has medium plus acidity, medium alcohol and soft tannins. On the palate, just pick cherries. And on the other side, Moret has medium minus intensity garnet color. On the nose, medium intensity aromas of unripe cherry, blueberries, cranberries, pomegranate, vanilla and cigarillo. Mouth has medium plus acidity, medium alcohol and delicate and tiny tannins. On the palate, cherry juice mixed with mineral water. For the conclusions, I knew that Alsace and Burgundy Pinot Noir will be different, but I did not expect that they would be completely different and be the perfect tools for this project. Both have a high ceiling, but Louis Max can be already consumed now and Moret should be kept in the cellar for another 10 years easily. Let me know in the comments uh, which Pinot Noir you prefer more. Don't forget to like and follow. Cheers guys!